Hey there, I have a message for you. Did you know I have hundreds of detailed tutorials showing a step-by-step in how to cut and style all types of hair in my app? Plus, you can be part of a private community where you can ask all your questions directed to me and of course, connect with barbers all over the world. If you want to become a barber with a high performance and make six figure a year, join us. The link is on the description on this video. What up everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the Modern Barber Blueprint course. And today I have here my model. Uh, he has a straight hair, but it's kind of tricky because it has few calyx. You have a calyx right here and a very uh, growth, uh, his natural growth pattern right here, he has his hair divides right here in the center and his hair grow natural this way i cannot like fight with the hair I'm trying to put this way i'm gonna do exactly uh what the hair is asking me to do but now he's gonna show me what he wants on first so what do you like boss um i would like this one and uh fade style okay. so i would like to keep that more more natural possible okay but uh yeah it's better like this mm -hmm. yeah, okay and uh, you style this side right yes yes same side that the natural hair is growing you know what i mean so okay yeah let's do that guys is is a client already uh we already know him he's a friend so now let me explain to you guys what i'm gonna do here Okay, that's how what I'm gonna do here. Uh, I'm gonna do the fade. Okay, I'm gonna do like low okay. to mid fade. So I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not gonna make a high. And I'm going to maintain the weight here. Add some texture on the top. I'm gonna maintain the length a little. I'm gonna train half of that. Okay, mm -hmm. half of that. But since right here on the top, the shorter it is, the more spiky it gets. Okay, I'm gonna control here here with some length and some texture as well. And the back the same, we have enough hair on the crown to control our calic. So this is it. So let's do that. Let me explain what I'm gonna do here today. I'm gonna take a big uh, separation of panel, big section. But of course, uh, maintain his natural growth, the direction natural growth, the hair growth is natural. So the idea here, I'm going to maintain a square shape on the sides. I'm gonna maintain a little bit of strength and length here on the corner. His head, when I look in here, his head here, it narrows as well, like a cone. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the head to enhance here and leave more square. We're gonna do mid to uh, low to mid fade. So when I look and try and analyze what I'm gonna do here, the first thing I look, trying to find, identify is his face shape. So the idea here, okay, I'm gonna cut the hair, and I'm gonna trim the beard, I'm gonna do the beard so you guys can see how different this is gonna look like. Okay, so I then I find his face shape. I, I need to look at, look at the quadrant, the quadrant, like meaning we're gonna separate his face. Imagine there's a line here, okay, and there's one, two, three lines across. That's why we call quadrant, because now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to analyze the first quadrant which is going to be my chin, okay, his chin actually. We're gonna use hair to enhance what needs to be enhanced and remove hair in the areas that it's already too much. It's already uh, exaggerating what doesn't need to be exaggerated. So the idea here, when I look at his chin, his chin is tucked in, it's a small chin. What we need to do is I'm going to give him some tip, some advice that he can let this area grow a little. So he's going to stretch out his uh, his chin and his, his face is gonna look more slimmer. We need more hair in the first quadrant, and which is the chin. And here, his chick is kind of round a little bit. As you can see, what we're gonna do, we're gonna taper this and leave this part uh, longer. And we're gonna do lines that is straight and pointy and angular to make his face more slimmer in this area, in the second quadrant. When I look from the side and I look how much his head is stretched, I'm gonna use the hair, okay, to compensate what needs to be compensated. But at first I wanna tell you, explain to you what I see here, okay? His forehead is kind of nice and square. It's not as smooth, it's not rounded. So I don't need to enhance much. So I'm gonna cut half of this remove some texture. I'm gonna lift and put to the side like this. 
okay, I'm gonna use. And here, we have enough hair if you, we want it. So stretch this and stretch this. We're gonna leave an, a lots of hair here. So the hair will stretch his head and the chin, if he, if he, want, if he wants to let his um, chin from the hair, the hair from the chin here grow, we will stretch more, we look more slimmer. So the idea, the total idea is making his face slimmer by tapering here, leaving the hair around the chin longer and leaving the crown here with a little bit more movement, not too much because his face shape is kind of already aesthetic. Okay, but the idea here is to do what I just explained to you guys and let's do it, let's start it. Always, I shampoo his hair twice Make sure the hair is clean to work with. The cleaner the hair is, the cleaner the style, the best style you're gonna get. Because if the hair is dirty, if the hair has too much oil and, and dirt, it's gonna have, you're gonna have a trouble. You're gonna have a hard time to style this hair. And also when you dry with the heat, it's gonna stink, it's gonna smell. But here now I did two shampoo. And now I'm applying leave-in condition. The leave-in condition is gonna keep the hair uh, a little more long, wet. So I'm cutting with shears. I'm gonna cut the whole top, put in my base, cut the top first before I move into the side uh, and start doing my clipper work. Guys, I'm going to start separating the top from the sides, but by analyzing his hair before anything else, I notice his hair is going to part here somewhere natural okay and where is gonna part natural if I work against the head natural growth pattern I'm gonna have a hard time to style his hair after so what I'm gonna do as you can see I didn't took my I didn't sweep the comb and make my first line in separation on the high recession no what I did I separate right at the contours start turning but here the hair itself is separating itself and that's how he will uh, style his hair to this side and when he first walked in I saw the hair in its most natural form so that's what I'm trying to follow and that's what I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave natural but on this side let me check so here I'm gonna take, this is going to be connected here. I'm gonna take from the highest recession. And the crown, the hair, we have enough length to leave it. Okay, we not might, we not might trim here because it's always spiking too much. But both sides, this is from the high recession, but this side is from its natural growth pattern. You see it's almost in the center of the head, but that's how the hair grows. We can't fight that. So now I'm gonna start putting my <clears throat> my base. The base can be, be done in a multiple ways, okay? You can pull the hair in 90 degree and you're gonna create more heavy, uh, heavy transition. Or you can also do a diagonal back and then you're gonna have that little bit of graduation. That's what we're gonna do here. Diagonal back. Now I know where, where I'm going to stop with my clippers. So here, I'm still taking diagonal back. If I cut more than I need in this area, his hair is going to spike and it's gonna be so hard so he can <clears throat> control at home and style at home. Now I know where to stop with my clipper work and then I'm gonna go do the, the same side on the same thing on the other side. So the same thing here, as you can see, I didn't separate it here because the hair is, is already short, okay? Now, I'm not gonna be able to 
to grab this hair because the hair is short it's not gonna come all the way down here in my base so I don't have, I don't have to uh, worry about it so but here I'm gonna start taking my diagonal back and create my base so since I take my first section what I do groom the head take my section this is diagonal back I hold it now I groom the hair from the bottom up because I'll need to over direct the hair the old my, my guide to my new section so that's what I do and I over direct it from the bottom and then I see my guide that is under and then I continue cutting I'm cutting my base with a little bit of graduation. Now I'm going to connect it here, which this was my last section from the other side. When you cut the top, you see this is our natural section, our natural uh, part. And then I'm only going to cut the center here now. I'm lifting up the fringe. The hair is kind of having a lot of strength and it's pulling this way, my left hand side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave enough length so the hair can go to that side. Because if I cut too much, too short, the hair is going to stick forward and he can never groom his hair to to one side even to one side he's gonna struggle so I'm cutting the center so in the crown here I'm not gonna work I'm just gonna check if it's even see parts right here itself so then I pick up the hair, hold nice and flat, square shape here. So now here's my profile and then I'm going to cut one, two, just following my profile. So you notice my finger were on the center. Now my finger moved slightly to the left. And then once I return on, on this corner, on this corner here, my finger, of course, is gonna move a little bit out of the head on the contours. That's what I'm doing, I'm following. I'm following my profile guide. See now, my hands is right here on the corner. I'm not doing any connection yet. One thing you guys should know is if I pick this hair up and if I over direct to my base and I cut it, it might be short and this hair right where the hair divides itself will be too short and the hair is going to be with lots of strength and the hair is going to be spiky. So the idea, I'm going to leave this part a little bit disconnected because it's going to grow this, groom this way. So now. I'm going to connect the hair on this side only with diagonal back. So here I'm taking diagonal back and connecting diagonal back to create a little bit of graduation. So 
what I have from here is not coming all the way to here to our base so we finish because here was longer but now we are going to work on this part of the hair where the head parts itself I'm not working in here just this fringe I want to bring it down and trim it now I'm using a paste that is gonna give me a natural look like a silk natural look with no shine at all I'm already applying and pushing the hair and putting the hair on its natural growth because that's how I'm going to blow dry and style his hair before I start cutting the sides always apply on the root a little bit guys now before I start debulking here I'm just gonna follow his natural growth okay as you can see right here it parts itself so I'm going to use I don't need a lot of heat I don't need a lot of pressure I'm just gonna use mid pressure medium pressure and mid heat medium heat I'm gonna dry the hair downwards I'm drying the product into the hair so that way I'm creating my style already once I finish cutting the sides with, with clippers my haircut is done my hair style is done the shape is done the style is done You guys, I'm gonna dry here the crown. You can see this piece of hair is short, it's spiking already. Imagine if I cut it, it will spike more. I left the length a little longer, so I have more control. You can't fight the hair natural growth patterns because that way you're gonna struggle you don't need to struggle right here in the center his head goes downwards that way and here it goes forward so if i if i blow dry the hair backwards here the hair will spike so i'm leaving the hair just go in where it wants it wants to grow So the hair flops here going forward and here we can lift it up a little and the sides we're gonna go backwards because the hair is gonna go easy and we're gonna give that nice connection here with the blow dry you guys notice I cut the whole top create my base with graduation uh, diagonal back trim the top focus on not cutting too much here where the cowlick is we spike too much leaving enough length I'm gonna add some texture here after after I, I, I cut it on the sides at the end so now we're ready to move into the sides so now I'm going to use number two to debulk if I groom the head down you guys are gonna see my base it's right here I'm using number two close to debulk all the way up here and lower here on the crown because if I go high the hair will spike and I'm gonna kill this we need the hair to compensate this area number two close when I'm debulking I'm just following my base
Now you guys can really see where's my base is. Where's my base? This is my base right here. I'm going to use one close to create my first graduation line. Following my base. In here, you want like a mid fade. I'm gonna leave like around two finger, finger and a half, two finger width below my base, and three fingers here below my base in this area, below my crown. Now I'm going to create my second graduation line with zero a finger width below my number one my guideline with my number one in here I'm going to maintain finger width sides and back So now I can choose if I'm gonna work uh, zero and below. So I'm gonna work on this guideline or on this guideline. So I can choose. So I'm first I'm gonna work in this guideline right here that's right beneath number one. So here I'm start fading and I switch my comb for my uh, fading brush. I'm going to start working with my half, uh, half guard all the way open lever open up to one my guideline one my first guideline with the one and i'm slightly slightly closing my lever there's no right or wrong way of how you work how you create guidelines and how you uh in how you do your fades, you have to work in how it's comfortable for you, but the principles of fading of haircuts needs to be the same. Don't try and change anything. So now, half closed. My line is almost gone, but I'm still gonna use my, half, my zero open all the way to close to finish cleaning here. Let me work it on the front. Uh, below the crown here, back here, open. Halfway closed. Closing my lever slowly, but at the same time I'm stretching my fade. So lever 100% closed. So now I have half guard with my lever closed. Be careful too, behind the ears we have a lot of floss. And here that we need to pay attention on it. We have a flaw right here, which gives me like a, a dimension that we, when, when we look at it, it looks like it has more dark spot. But the thing is, since there's a, a, a groove here, like a flaw, we need to stretch the fade in that area, use some techniques and tools to remove that density and that look that it looks darker. First, you, you know, you first thing you do is stretch as much possible in that area and also work, the, with, work with the corner of the clippers too, of the guards after. So now zero open. Closing my guard, closing my lever. Slowly, but I'm not going to close zero gap now because I did zero beneath here. If I close all the way, I need to be careful and stay very, very low on my guideline because otherwise I will be creating 
another line, a line that you, you don't wish for. So now I close everything, but I'm working low on the line. Look, I'm scooping. I want to go higher, open up a tiny bit and go higher. Working on the sides. I'm stretching my face. So at the end, the end result will look like more cleaner. Closing my, my lever little by little. The last thing I'm gonna work on today, finish the haircut, finish the style, and then I'm gonna work on his beard here so you guys can see what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, okay? See, I blend my first, um, my second, this one was the zero, my uh, second uh, guideline, and then I'm gonna work on my first guideline that I done before with the one here. Starting with my one and a half closed. So I'm gonna tap my number two. Scooping. I want to go a little bit closer to number two. I open up and just connect and finish just cleaning the crown now. Always work in this motion. If I go slowly, you're going to see I work in a C motion at all times, almost straight up. But when it gets high enough, your clipper come off of the head a little bit. So you connect guards so you can connect the guards. Because if you go over straight, you might be curving line under here. Open up, just kiss number two, and then we're done. I'm going to start with a one open. Same motion. Look, I go high enough, and my clipper come off the head a little bit. I'm going slow motion so you guys can see it. When I go full speed, it's like this. Closing my lever, keep a little bit lower. Closed, one closed. I started with one open, close the lever little by little, now one close. Sides, again the same. One open. Close my lever. One closed. You see how I hold my clippers? My clippers now is free to move. I cannot hold like this, otherwise I can't move my wrist uh, freely, you know, with more mobility. What I do, I close all the way and I only hold with my four uh, fingers beneath where I have those grooves here and the thumb 
and I move my wrist and I can go forward, back, up. So that's how you hold your clippers so you can have more mobility. We still see a line here and then we're gonna use half again to finish playing the line. We're gonna start with the half open. So half open, now we're not cutting anything, it's just kind of, it's the finalization. It's just work on details, half open. Closing my lever. Closing all the way. Line is almost gone now. Closing all the way. Work low on the line. Back here, open, closing. If you are rubbing the last guard, which now this one is a half, and if you still, some, still see some areas that need to be cut it to clean it, Come and finish detail with the zero open, and then you start closing and picking and using the corners. Remember here on the floor, right here behind the ears, we usually have lots of floors, guys. <clears throat> Meaning that everybody has floors behind the ears where the mastoid bone, bone is. That's the predominant area that has uh, flaws. And I stretch the fade there and I use corners to stretch the fade there and it looks like clean that way. So now I'm going to remove the hair. from here so I can use my shaver. I'm using my trimmer. You notice, you notice that I'm not pushing down the hairline like this because today I'm going to work with my shaver more free. But if you're not comfortable enough, you saw the videos before in this course here, some classes you saw it. I first mark and pushing down my line, and then I use my straight razor to mark where I'm gonna stop with the shaver, okay? But today I'm gonna show you guys in a different way, so you guys can learn different ways of cutting, cutting hair and, and fading hair. So you guys saw it, I didn't mark with my straight razor. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to work scooping and very, very less uh, tension. I'm gonna put it on the skin. Some people make circles with their uh, shaver, with their foils. But uh, what I'm gonna do, just kind of scooping. Back here, you can see better. So I can tap it down first before I move up. Tap it down, and then I go up, but it's scooping. You see, I'm not creating any harsh line. If you're not comfortable, always you can work in a way that is comfortable for you. See, I'm tapping down. If I wanna go higher, I'm tapping down. As always, you know, I work with my scissors to maintain and have total control of my shape and the length because if I come with uh, my clipper 
with a guard, I might end up going too high and break the idea of maintaining square and length and strength around here. So I'm using my shear so I can have more control. I'm going to use uh, the wider side of the comb to cut length. And then I'm going to use the barbering side of the comb to uh, cut short. And then after that, I'm going to use my barbering comb to continue cleaning and working on, on this area here. So, regular shears just to cut length. I'm just dusting off little by little I don't need to cut uh, chunks sometimes I switch to my barbering comb side work lower Always work on my length first and then I work in density blending shears as you can see we have teeth that is very close to each other that's meaning blending shears I remove weight and density I'm still working with the wider side of the comb because I'm going to go high and start like low in here. Always groom the hair and check if you need to cut more. So now I'm going to use the barbering side to stay low here on the connection. Really important too, guys, understand and have control of all your tools. As you can see, I'm grooming and I'm cutting. I don't have to go and twist my, my comb all over like this. I'm only using my thumb to groom and cut. So, and my shears, at the same time, my shears I'm only using my thumb because I have a more precise cutting line. You see, my shears are not moving too much. So then I have more precision and a better result. 
I'm looking for areas that are darker than others. As you guys already know, I don't use enhancements to make my haircuts look beautiful. I do my best with what I got. This side the same, bring it down so you can see your base, the bulk. Number two. So what I'm doing here now, I'm kind of stop with my clipper and bringing down the hair from the base and putting inside my clippers so I can already give them a little bit of um, kind of connection here already. Instead, you can keep, if you can keep cur curving under, you're going to create a huge dent in here and then it's going to be harder for you. So number one, two finger width. below your base and three finger width below your, your base back here one zero oh zero close one finger width below the guideline. Half open. Tapping number number one. Closing my lever. Closing my lever, half, zero open. Just finish the details.
So zero all the way close, but maintain low on my line, just like I did on the other side. Same thing, same process, same guidelines, same heights. Same motions. I'm going to work on my first graduation line, which was with, done with number one, high here. I'm going to work with my one and a half closed, kind of tapping the two, okay? But just to finish the last detail, I'm gonna open up a little bit and go higher with the one, one and a half closed. Once I finish using and cutting with one and a half all the way closed, open up and go high a little bit, scooping and kissing number two, just connecting the guards, both guards. Put it back one open. One open, one halfway closed. Guys, fading is a very delicate process. Okay, you need to know how high, how high you're gonna go with each guard because you can end up messing up the previous guy by creating a line or curving a, a line under a bigger guard and also at the same time paying attention on the motions and how you use the motions with your clippers. At all times you need to be focused on those two things. So I'm putting back half open. I'm closing my lever. But I'm maintaining my clipper low. Halfway close, open up a little bit because I want to go higher. Closing down little by little. Guy, the lever is here for a reason. You have to be constantly using the lever. If you want to go higher, open up. If you want to stay low, close. Zero open. There go. Have open again, just to finish here the last details. I'm connecting now both sides right here in the center, center back.
You guys see now I'm working with the corners of my blade just to give just this, this is just like like point cutting technique with shears. I'm using my my clipper to do that. And I'm using my trimmer. my foil I'm using my foil just like I use my clipper and my trimmer scooping tapping down Still my regular shears on this side. Blending shears. You guys can see how clean it's coming out. If you know how to use your blending shears correctly, guys, you can get the perfect fade. As you can see, no enhancement here. I didn't even finish yet. Hello, hello. <clears throat> See how dark it is here? Look how this is gonna come off. I'm start working low where where I was working with my clippers and then I connect with my shears. Look. It's 
see how it came off. I'm going to work on his beard. Remember, his chin is narrowed, his cheek is wider, and here is narrowed, a little narrowed and, and kind of going in more than here. So narrowed, narrowed, and popping out. So I'm gonna taper this so the chin stretches a little bit. First, I'm trimming downwards. And now I'm debulking with the two. So I wanna work my fade in this area, tapered, and live longer from here to the chin. But of course here I'm gonna trim a little more just because I want this longer. So the first thing I do in beard, guys, I kind of trim following the grain, bloom, following the grain. I'm gonna mark my first graduation line, one finger width below the tip of the, uh, the, the, the ears here, one finger width. So now I'm gonna clean this line with one and a half closed. Put it back one, open up. Wanna work against the grain. So line, now my graduation line is clean. I'm going to create a one figure width higher with my zero. That's another graduation line. Using half now against the grain. And blend that line. But I'm not going to be able to blend this line 100%. It's just because I create with the zero and now I'm using half and my lever all the way closed, open all the way closed, now zero open and using my lever and I'm going to use zero gap just to finish blending this line right here. So last detail with trimmer. My line. Shaver. Last detail here, low. On the sideburns. So now I'm going to work on my line and my line needs to be pointing down or square and I'm gonna keep it high
So right now I'm not cutting length, just adding some deep point cutting technique so I can make this hair a little bit more loose, a bit more movement. Here the hair is grooming to the sides, so I'm gonna pick the fringe. So now I'm applying a little bit more paste. I'm rubbing in my hand, spread it well. And I'm going to apply follow the hair natural growth. Just applying following. I'm not pushing to any other direction. This side I connect, pushing back. Up here I'm pushing forward and down low this side back, crown downwards. So now medium heat, medium pressure. I'm going to groom the side backwards. I'm using his hair natural part in my favor. A little bit of hairspray. Guys, this is it. This is the result. I told you 
what's gonna happen. I left here on the C cup natural. He doesn't have much crazy hairline. It's very natural, very neat. Uh, the beard I showed you, I tapered here, more angular lines. Now he's gonna leave, uh, grow like at least like a, a, an inch on his chin. So stretch out a little bit. As you can see, I tapered down here and kept like with a graduation towards the, uh, towards the chin. But the hair here, we did a low mid fade and the hair, I used the natural part on top. That's how he's gonna, every time and every day, he's gonna wake up, the hair is gonna part itself right there. So we need to use the hair where the hair wants to go, we need to kind of just follow so you don't struggle yourself. So here, that's how he likes to uh, style his hair to the side. On top here, can you put it down? As you can see, he's laying forward, fringe backwards this side, connecting this side and a little bit disconnected here with the fringe. Let me break it down for you guys. What I did, I, I part the hair on its natural uh, growth pattern here natural here I took I sweep my comb from the high recession to the crown but the crown I didn't do anything I just let it uh, sit natural because the hair here was shorter already and I start cutting creating my base by doing diagonal back with a little bit of graduation as you can see there's a little bit of graduation here and then I start cutting the top I pick the hair from the, the top center up flat layers i cut in triangle put all to my line triangle no um, square i'm sorry square i put everything pull everything to my line square line cut everything in the center then i cut here on this corner letting a little bit disconnected here and then i cut the left hand side following my profile guide was 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 from here and then i connected this side with the uh, diagonal back as well and then I dry the hair 100% and I fade it on the sides by debulking with two, marking my first graduation line with the number one. And then my second graduation line with the zero close, I blend that line. I using lots of my regular shears to cut length and then my texturizing, my, uh, my blending shears to remove bulk and density and kind of give that beautiful transition here. I add some texture, deep point cutting on the top I applied, uh, I did apply texturizing powder today, but only applied the, the paste, which gives me this natural effect, silk natural look. So guys, this is the final result. You saw the step-by-step -step in how I work in this type of hair. You see, I work what, with what the hair gives to me. If the hair gives it to me that the hair is going to part natural here, I'm not gonna do my a uh, big section on the top on the high recession. No, because the hair wants to grow that way. The hair wants to part here. So I need to work with the hair. So I work in my favor because if I follow the hair's natural growth, it's gonna be much easier for me and for my client at the end. Hope you guys like. This is the final result. Mid fade, comb over with the part, natural part, tapered beard. That's what you guys saw. Thank you very much for watching one more class here at the Modern Barber Blueprint course. Thank you very much for watching.